There's a breakfast and plus CV Africa. Many thanks for being with us and staying with us as well. Uh, as always, we have Tunde Kola will he join the conversation, all things being equal. Uh, we're hoping that he joins us. But we'd like to start off with the papers as uh, we have them in front of us. We have the leadership. I start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. On the leadership newspaper, insecurity, Northern governors, traditional rulers, back creation of state police. I mean, this is a conversation that's been ongoing for a very long time. Pledge to support amendment of constitution to achieve goal. Agree to have S2,000 megawatts of solar energy to spur regions economic activities. I have done well in insecurity infrastructure. That's what uh, the president declares. These are riders underneath the caption. Amid PDP crisis, IU leaves for Europe, hands over to Damagun. Okay. U.S. commits $200 million to climate change fight in Nigeria. Again, bank holds clash disbursement of forex for PTA slash BTA. And United Kingdom please decline comment on Equimada's health status. Uh, that's really worrisome. Court grants DSS request to detain Mamu for 60 days. And just before we move away from the leadership, respite as diesel price drops by 11%. Anti-labor laws, aviation union issues, 14-day ultimatum to federal government. These are the headlines on the leadership. Let's move straight to this day, uh, the next paper there uh, on our list. We have uh, some interesting headlines on the front page of this day. 2023, Atiku proposes $10 billion economic stimulus fund for MSMEs unfolds blueprint. Right, quite interesting. The writer to that vows to privatize refineries, then utilize $155 billion. Uh, that's your $1.55 billion. I almost had to scream here. <laughs> $1.55 billion to revitalize them. Another writer to that, it says he will propose legislation to remove electricity from exclusive list. Meets marking day. Southwest party leaders today promises to help PDP win Lagos. Uh, some headlines uh, coming in. Uh, that's the first one, the big one on the front page of, uh, of this day. Buhari Hale, CBN, NDIC, NICOM on others and financial system stability, says uh, government tackling insecurity inflation, mass emigration of talents and settles, banking industry, uh, GUMEL, or banking innovation, must not be at expense of rural communities. All right, uh, more from this day. NNPCL set to sign 7,000-kilometer gas pipeline contract in Morocco, West African countries, details on page uh, 8 of that paper. Senate rejects 6 trillion naira tax, import duties, waivers, and 2023 proposed budget. Something to look at. Something. Who are those whose uh, uh, duties, import duties, are, will be waived? It's, uh, it's interesting to see the Senate rejecting that. Insists proposed a 12.43 trillion naira deficit, unacceptable. That's the highest ever in the history of the country. Moving from a country that used to have a, uh, you know, a balanced budget to a, a fully deficit budget, that is quite, uh, quite unacceptable. The Senate is insisting. And uh, those are the headlines on the front page of uh, this day. Away from this day, uh, let's take a look at the punch. On the punch, Atiku Okoa rubbish APC over Muslim Muslim ticket economy. That's boldly written on the page of the punch. You have several riders, says unemployment rose by 54% to 68 million uh, Nigerians poor on the Buhari. Muslim, Muslim ticket dangerous for troubled nation like Nigeria, Okoa tells APC. And nothing can reinstate opposition to same faith ticket. I have done well. Buhari appraises himself. This is a ride as you find it. Tunubu healthy. APC tells OB and decries defections. That's uh, another caption. Angola, Libya overtake Nigeria in crude production. This is according to OPEC. And Senate minister disagree over 12 trillion naira budget deficit. Again, Vice President Slot Okowa most qualified. Are you 
tells critics. My life under threat over Queen's, Queen Elizabeth's tweets. Uh, that's what Professor Drew. I mean, you remember that tweet uh, that's been put out as regards, you know, how she feels with colonization and all that happened with the Biafran War, uh, which according to how she described as a genocide. And a strike motorists stranded as students block Lagos Ibadan Expressway. Police get 431 petitions over corpse misconduct. Ogun Kingship Torsel claims three lives, houses burnt. And Senate begins oil thefts probe in Niger Delta. These are the headlines on the punch. All right, moving quickly over to the nation, we have a big story there, the lead headline, Buhari, we've done well with available resources. I think the paper left out the word extremely, because that's what he said. We've done extremely well. Um, his government has done extremely well. And he went on to give a speech, he gave a speech in Imo State, uh, where he was hosted as part of his uh, presidential um, uh, visit. Uh, he said that, you know what, we... If you look at the time we've had, the resources available to us, we've done extremely well, is what he said. And uh, quite a number of persons uh, decided to comment on that. Well, right as to that headline, uh, Ohaneze restates commitment, restates commitment to Nigeria. Igbo leaders seek equity. Uh, Makinde Bola Rumi clash over Atiku. Rao over Southwest. Uh, I cannot see what is the thing the paper needs to do better and uh, uh, probably... With the, with the typography and the, the graphic design, I can't see. But anyway, it says, Makinde Bola Rumi, clash over Atiku. Not governor's monarchs call for state police. <laughs> Interesting. My plans for Nigerians by Atiku at LCCS Forum. He's in Lagos, by the way, and uh, that's what it came for. Uh, Army, we're tracking terror sponsors. We're tracking terror sponsors. Uh, hallelujah. Next one, insecurity. Ondo bans night clubbing. Messi, did you hear that? Why are you looking okay. at me? Ondo has bad nightclub. <laughs> yes, you think going to be bad. Um, for, for the weekend, you know, or just facing the cool off after, after a long week's work. Nothing there for, 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 for us. For us, right? <laughs> <laughs> or your government, okay, 778 million naira to kit. Um, what are they kitting? Flutterwave gets CBN switching processing permit. Uh, yeah. And uh, Tukuru Mamu is a terror financier. Uh, uh, financier, DSS tells court. Tukuru Mamu is a terror financier. Uh, DSS tells court. Uh, let's see how this one goes. Uh, lady offers to donate kidney to Aquarium Madu's daughter. I'm surprised the Nigerian men are not falling by themselves to give her their kidney because, I mean, um, I'm sure this would be a good way to say, uh, I love you, you know. Yes, 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 yes. She's a very beautiful young woman, a criminal daughter. And she says, I need someone to help me. Can you donate your kidney? And it's a woman. What are the men doing? This is, this is where men so, stand so up. I think I saw a lot of reports. I have seen a lot of you know, appeals and letters that's been put out. I really don't know if they're very, very honest or these are sincere thoughts. But I think that Nigerians, some Nigerians, not all, have actually clammed on that or probably stepped, you know, step forward and mostly um, some of men because be she's very pretty damn so no but, but why would you think that because you know the context of that letter talks about compassion mm -hmm. and you know well, when you're tell, talking about compassion yeah I, I'm, I'm just saying this is on lighter note though it's on lighter note <laughs> you know, it's a private life. It's a different situation. Altogether. Exactly. So yes. that, that would sh should be done without I any mean, so, expectation. Someone could step up and say and strike a deal. Say I want a better life. I know, I no, want but, but, but in I the context to... of all of that, you know, following, you know, the laws and what have you, because mm. all of this is going you don't to happen want it to be... in the United Kingdom. So yeah. this, you're not supposed to have any Pay for it. sort of expectation mm, or yes, give and indeed. take. It should be, it should come out of a place of, you know, kindness. And yes, love. indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, humanity. That, 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 that's, that's on paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but humanity is, I mean, I thought about it. Could I, the first thing, the thing, can I donate, you know, to her? Would you like to donate? If there's compatibility and I see that, I mean, I can help save a life here. Yeah. Oh, this is very yeah. thoughtful of you. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's scary, but I, I've been inspired by people who have seen talk about how they gave a, a kidney to save a life. There's a Nigerian doctor in the United States of America who was part of a documentary by DW. You know, he, they talked about Africans who are doing well in, in the United States of America with their business. He's, I think he's, he's a doctor, a real estate guy. No, 
he's a he's a businessman yeah a businessman and and he gave his kidney you know he gave his kidney and uh, uh he cracked a joke in that documentary saying that when he heard that the man will have to change it after some years he said uh, even knew you're not giving it because he thought that was going to be for life <laughs> you know but it was inspiring yeah, yeah, I get it's very, very inspiring. Yeah. And, and some persons also have questioned, you know, because a lot of people are saying uh, she probably comes from a family, right? Uh, she should have relatives, you know, what have you, nuclear family, extended family. And so what happens? Why is she making an appeal? But um, the, the doctors have actually advised that, you know, for the sake of um, being that it's hereditary, it's possible that it's genetic. And so it, it would be very risky to have family members, whether extended or nuclear family, indulging in all of that. And that's why the appeal has been put out. Looking at the circumstances, Sarah, why you, why, I don't, do you, do you know if I have just one kid? <laughs> I don't know. Do, you, do you know if it's only one that I have? If I have only one, I can't give the other one. So you don't. <laughs> no, basically, you have two kidneys. <laughs> You know, but it, it, it's, it's a dark situation. No, I mean, I totally understand. Yes, it's a dark situation. But I know that Nigerians I, 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 I will come to the rescue. Yes, yes. yes Nigerians yes. will definitely come to yeah, the rescue. Yeah, our, our hearts go out to the queer mothers. It's a, it's a sad situation looking at the predicament of the father because, I mean, we've all seen that the boy was uh, who he took there, also trying to play a fast one, you know, um, on them with the whole um, an underage person thing. The case is still in, is still in court, but. I mean, from what Time we see, mm, but what we see, he well, he's not who he says he is, uh, being a minor, and uh, he's trying to capitalize on the situation. He doesn't want to come back to Nigeria. That's the bottom line. He doesn't want to lose so out. So the just be he doesn't want to the, the young man <laughs> said, "Oh, since they've seen that my kid is not useful, and they want to bring me back, let me look for a way to Jack stay Ma. to stay here." And that's it. That's what happened. You know. So so um, it's sad. What the queer mothers are going through is sad. I mean, people will stand up and say, "Oh, they are politicians. He's a politician. He gets what he's getting what he deserves." Ole and all that. But you see, um, you can't just group everyone together. You can't just generalize and say, oh, people are different, people are individual. You don't know what the constituents of a Mekwe Maru think. If you go to his village, go to his central district, what do his constituents think about him? You understand? And should a daughter die simply because the father, by some twist of fate, happens to be a politician? Is it a daughter's fault? That the father is a politician. No, no, I'm, I'm, and that's you why, I, that's so, why so I actually said we, that. We need to separate our sentiments from uh, these issues that are real and involve human life. And you so, know, it's, 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 uh, because before, before... And most of those who are, who are celebrating before online the were obedient. Uh, or before anyone is actually a politician or you're anything that you are, you're first of all a human being. And that's very important. So with humans and in our interaction every other day, we expect that there should be compassion and everyone should be, you know, treat everyone with respect and compassion. It could have happened to anyone. It can be any other person. And so empathy and sympathy is what's required at this point in time. But I believe that Nigerians would actually come, you know, to the rescue for the Aquarium Madus especially her daughter. But away from that, you have the leadership. Now, very interesting, Kofi, is the issue of state police. And I think that we, we seem to be going in circles. Now you have uh, northern governors and traditional rulers uh, who are saying, hey, we're so in support of the creation of state police. So my question, it, it takes me back, you know, to the beginning, or almost not the beginning, but what happens to the 2014 Confab? Because if you look at the 2014 Confab, uh, it had given, you know, approval. I mean, it has... Uh, the creation of um, an establishment and approval of state police and also, you know, uh, what do you call them, border police and enforcement, all of this. So it had approved the creation of state police, national border forces, and coastal guards, among others, for improved security across the nation. Why do we have to still come back, you know, to the table talking about let's back creation of state police when we already have a report and a document, you know, conference that report? Why has it not been implemented? Is another question. Do we need to? Do we still have to go back, you know, in circle to talk about creation of state police? But I know that a lot of persons are not in support of the state police. Uh, some people who are. Uh, not in support of the state police. Arguments have been put out that, oh, you know, the state police uh, is, is actually not good because, number one, you know, state governors would capitalize that we use, you know, this state apparatus uh, for their own gains, intimidate people and what have you. That's been the argument. But 
we, 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 I don't know, you know how valid that is because uh, should we give it a try or not give it a try? There, there are a lot of concerns about having you know, state police across the entire 36 states, which will help the people police the state. And other persons are also saying that you, if you look at state policing, it would therefore mean that state governors or state government would have to pay these police officers. And so does this state, uh, the states, are they really, really capable in terms of you know, paying salaries and what have you? But I think that if we're towing that line, what will be also necessary and important to say, let's also have, you know, um, what is it called again? Resource control. It should be hand in hand. Resource control and state police will go hand in hand, if that's the argument. So the states are, you know, uh, able, they have the capacity to control the uh, security architecture in their various states. But I don't think that there's anything that does not have, you know, disadvantage. However, there's always an advantage and disadvantage if you look at it. But we need to begin to wear options. And was was it that we're talking about creation and backing constitutional review when we already have a document? Why haven't we implemented this document or report? However, it's, it's interesting. I think um, uh, the the northern governors are looking at the current realities. Um, uh, of their situation, you know, cut uh, the unfolding and uh, worsening, deteriorating security situation in that part of the country. Uh, it will be no surprises, uh, you know, they'll be asking for this. Um, in in parts of the northeast, you've already have what we call civilian JTF, but you know, they're not barely armed, uh, and these are they've assisted the police, you know, to fight Boko Haram. Um, uh, you look at the fact that they have had to use, um, you know, locally made weapons and all that support the police and the, the army. Um, you look at the fact that in, in parts of the north, like Kaduna State, you know, in order to protect themselves, themselves against uh, uh, what they would describe as a marauding Fulani militia, because it's between the, the uh, you know, you have two kinds of Fulanis, the ones that they know and the ones that are, uh, they're seeing, you know, uh, Murawi guns and attacking communities and uh, destroying uh, buildings, burning, killing, and also uh, cattle rustling. Now, if you remember the, uh, the Daily Trust documentary and the BBC documentary, they put out some important information. It helped us understand the situation. It's, uh, it's a tribal war that's going on in the northern part of the country right now. Um, so, so these communities have had to, uh, the houses, houses in particular, have had to uh, arm their youth. You know, arm their youth with AK-47s, you know, to protect themselves against uh, uh, the, the the Fulani. Now, the the nomadic Fulani communities who are not part of those who have been doing the killing and attacks also now are targeted because they also still Fulani. Now they have to protect themselves. It's become a a, a, a cocktail of violence. You want to call it that? So there are no surprises there. The government is saying, let's do what we can do. You look at what happened in Benue State, where uh, Samuel Tom launched a, a local vigilante, you know, outfit. You know, something like you have Omotek in the southwest, and you have Ibuwagu in the southeast. Um, you know, he's launched something like that. In the southeast, you have Ibuwagu, which is not active in all the states, but it's in some states. In the southwest, you have Omotek, they recorded some successes, but also um, some failures, you know, some of them... Stories you've heard that uh, people have been accidentally killed and all that by, uh, by Omoteku. So I think the fear by most who oppose this is that um, the state governments will use these, uh, this power of the security for uh, personal purposes. You look at what's happening in some states where the governor, you know, because he has a political axe to grind, uh, will declare some of his opponents wanted or use the uh, apparatus of state to shut down their businesses and to pick people up, you know, people who have nothing to do with, with, with his uh, political battle. And we see governors using the police and the uh, apparatus of uh, state security for personal vendetta, you know. So people are, are, are concerned and they would say, if we have a, officially have state policing in Nigeria, will the governors not do worse? You know, but I think that some experts have also said, if I remember correctly, that there are ways to go about this thing. There could be checks and balances. There could be uh, uh, structures put in place to ensure that governors do not use the state police for or police uh, for their personal vendetta and witch hunt and all that. But I think it will happen. Even, even as it is now, it's happening. You know. And these governors, when they are faced with security challenges in their state, will tell you, oh, uh, the federal government controls the police. Oh, we, we don't have anything to do. There's nothing we can do. You know, they report to Abuja. But when they have to go after their political enemies, then we'll notice and see that they can actually tell the police to do A, B, C, D, and E. 
and they'll do that. So it's interesting. Uh, another story on the front page of uh, the leadership happens to do with uh, banks halting cash disbursement to Forex. You know, it talks about uh, PTA and BTA, and this is uh, uh, quite unfortunate. Uh, how are Nigerians going to do? And how are the businesses who are here well, going to going to do? Because when you look at personal travel allowance, you have to travel abroad if for holiday. You want to go to some other country for a summer or winter or spring or fall, whatever it is you want to go for. I don't know why people leave uh, the heat of Africa to go abroad for summer. They don't also want to come here. But anyway, um, you want to travel, send your child to school, you know, in some other part of the world. And they need USD to be able to make the trip, to go there and know that they can survive. Because they won't go with their Naira and go to New York City, uh, go to Chase Manhattan and say, please take my Naira. Probably in these countries, they don't accept the Naira because of the value or they don't know what it is or something. So you want to go with U.S. dollars. And of course, the banks won't allow them to uh, withdraw more than... In fact, some banks have stopped altogether allowing uh, debits, you know, cardholders to make withdrawals in foreign countries. And I remember how, what I faced when I traveled <laughs> abroad. or well, my food times, have, I've almost been, almost been stranded, you know. I think in the UAE, I was able to use my card. Uh, but I, I learned my lesson, and I withdrew as much as I could. You know, I withdrew as much as so. But Nigerians are smart; they'll find a way around this for the personal travel allowance. You know, because you you need to have USD to go, so you can survive. You won't go with naira. You know what I'm saying? You won't go with naira, and then change it there. Even in in in, well, in some neighboring countries, you can't even you can change the naira, but you have to really know your way around to change the naira because the value is dropping every day. You understand? Of so so how how, how are businesses and uh, personal uh, are people going to individuals going to manage how would, how would those who send their kids about manage i think this is where you see the rise okay this is where you see the rise of cryptocurrency this is where you see the rise of uh, cryptocurrency platforms you know i don't, I don't mention it so i was going through the instagram page of one young man who has a, a crypto exchange i mean I, I check him out from time to time and the guy is doing well he's bowling he's rolling in cash <laughs> you know why won't he roll in? he will make a lot of money because of this situation crypto is going to go i think if cash not taken nigerians will surpass the, the top countries in adapt adapting uh, cryptocurrencies because what they do is they will take the money go buy crypto store it on their uh, uh their their blockchain account get abroad and then sell the crypto to U.S. dollars, and then they move on. You understand? So, <laughs> if the CBN is clamping down on crypto, you know, accounts or crypto companies, they are still going to make things difficult for the businesses as well. I think crypto will be the way to go because so you go to you, you go to the bank, you want to get the USD to make purchases to you know to to buy your goods to to import into country, your raw materials, whatever it is. You can't get. How are you going to survive? Ultimately, ultimately, we'll see this affecting uh, the Nigerian economy further negatively. And, and you know that, you know, looking at it in a holistic manner is also a way of discouraging all of this uh, sort of importation because usually that's, you know, that's what a government would actually do. But if, if, if a government would like to encourage, you know, or discourage local, I mean, uh, importation into the country, then there should be, um, in the country in itself, there should be some other measures that have been put together to ensure that, uh, there are options. For instance, if you say people should not import X, Y, Z, uh, foreign consumption of other products, then we should be, have the capacity, you know, to begin to purchase some of this. Because all of that is also a way to dissuade travels and what have you, you know, in the long run. But quickly, as we course this other one down. Yes, but, but you, you're right, Mercy, in, in, in that the, the reason they're, they're, they're halting these disbursements is they want to see how they can uh, stabilize the value of the Naira. But well, time will tell if it's going to, you know, stabilize the value of the Naira. It's going to de further, de uh, you know, devalue the Naira or uh, depreciate the value, sorry, depreciate the value of the Naira. Yeah. Well, another one that I think that everyone should be, I mean, the Nigerian government and everybody should be concerned about is the fact that if, if we look at the reports from, that's on the Punch, by the way, uh, on the Punch newspaper where you have Angola and Libya overtaking Nigerian crude production. That's what OPEC is quoted to say. And uh, for an economy that's highly dependent on oil for her earnings, then it calls for a lot of worry. I mean, concern. We're saying that highly all of our earnings were very dependent on it. And if we have, we have not been able to meet the quota, uh, just recently, I remember I think we're talking about that with Chris Kane and Wandu or maybe uh, Open the Bon Kataria or one of them. Well, we talked about that. Should we be excited that, you know, OPEC has actually given, has increased the quota for Nigeria? It should be a good thing that your quota has been increased between a period of time for 20 
2022. But have we been able to even meet the previous quota? Because right now we're producing, you know, below one million. We're doing a hundred uh, nine hundred and seventy two thousand barrels and that's not very commendable we have actually dwindled we've gone down and what are the factors that are responsible for this i'm thinking that the government should be on top of the situation everyone stakeholders should sit up because we can't continue like this we're just going you know below bar how can yeah. You know, country be producing 972,000 barrels per day as of August. And you have this country like Libya and Angola having higher uh, volume of crude being uh, you know, produced. Yeah, Messi, because we're out of time, very quickly, you know, the, 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 the picture painted to me even is uh, uh, to say now that, I mean, Libya, they've been in a state of war. You know, or let me say instability and internal crisis and turmoil for some years since the death of uh, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi. Uh, um, and it's not a stable country. In fact, it's yeah, almost some a people don't think that that's so, the case. So, so, so um, for Libya to overtake Nigeria, I think it paints the, the picture that we all should be aware of. But um, Angola, I'm not surprised. Angola has been number one in Africa for, for years, so I'm, I'm not surprised. But the saddest part is that, for me, Libya, uh, number two, um, that the country is not able to fulfill its OPEC quota. That, that is sad. But then again, so I would say, even if the country is able to sell all the... Where, where is the money going to go to? But, but there should uh, be know, a conversation for another know, time. Look at how high crude oil uh, went over the past few years. And how high is trading because of the, the Russia-Ukraine crisis. You know, look at how high the prices have gone. I mean, this is where Nigeria should be cashing out. Let's move on, please. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's move on. I understand the feeling, but that's the size of our conversation this morning on Off the Press. We'll take a break now, and when we return, we'll be right here with our first major conversation. Uh, aviation workers are threatening to embark on strike following a clause that should be removed as been demanded by this workers listening with us.